वेलकम चेन्नई वेलकम ऑन एन डी टी वी नेटवर्क यू आर वॉचिंग बैटल ग्राउंड तमिलनाडु नाइनटीन्थ अप्रैल फर्स्ट फेज ऑफ पोलिंग तमिलनाडु ऑल सीट्स दे आर गोइंग फॉर पोल्स एंड दिस इज द मोस्ट वॉस्ट स्टेट बिकॉज मिस्टर नरेंद्र मोदी हैज पुट हिज इंटायर पर्सनल क्रेडिबिलिटी एंड इक्विटी ऑन दिस स्टेट मोर देन एनी अदर स्टेट अ स्टेट वेयर बीजेपी इज नॉट एक्सपेक्टिंग मेनी सीट्स बट अ सीरियस सिग्निफिकेंट जम्प इन वोट शेयर इट इज जस्ट नॉट एन इलेक्शन फॉर हिम आई थिंक इट इज अ सिविलाइजेशनल प्रोजेक्ट दैट इज वर्किंग ऑन वी हैव अ ग्रैंड पैनल हियर इन तमिलनाडु पॉलिटिक्स टू टॉक अबाउट different aspect of the election i am introducing you for, from my left mr sandeep shastri loknithi a great data analyst manisha priyam ji social scientist data scientist amitabh tiwari manu sundaram from uh, dmk apsara reddy spokesperson from aia dmk and last but not the least bjp state vice president mr narayanan tirumurthi thank you so much for your uh, time here i will start to set the tone of this conversation uh, with mr sandeep shastri why are you watching tamil nadu uh, sanjay ji i am watching tel- uh, tamil nadu for multiple reasons this was a state which largely had a two alliance competition from 1977 onwards from 70% to 96% of votes was between these two parties and uh, between these two alliances and this time around the bjp is leading a i will not say third force is leading another force and this changes in certain ways the dynamics of the politics of the state that against two parties which were seen as dravida parties leading two alliances you have uh, the bjp now coming in leading the third alliance and hoping to position itself at the end of this election as a key challenger to the dmk and the last point i would uh, make on this is prime minister was very clear that uh, when asked whether 2029 election is important he said no i am looking at 2047 and i think he said that keeping tamil nadu in mind because the long term goal is very much there for them here right manisha ji what is the core factor you are looking at in tamil nadu Uh, so i do think that there are very important changes in india's national politics in this election round uh, if we look at the last election in 2019 almost all of us believed and perhaps truly so that there was a national wave around the pulwama this time around you see that state politics and the color of state politics matters a lot and you see even a prime minister leading a state politics with state level ambitions so this leaves a lot of us largely those of us living in the northern parts of india as to what the ambitions of the bjp are in this land which has been the center of dravidian politics historically as soon as the indian national congress set up the home rulers any basant and the rdr the women's politics soon after that there was an anti brahman movement the justi justice party uh, which was uh, formed here the newspaper justice led an agitation that later on led to the foundations of the non brahman movement and the syncretizing of the dravidian politics around it so what is it now where are the fault lines with which a national party such as the bjp believes that it finds a ground in tamil nadu and that's what i would like to look at with a lot of surprise but also with a lot of awe remember the politics of the national parties up until now has been very different from how it's been played out in the state of tamil nadu right amitabh congress party ceased to be a core player in this state decades ago now a national party is making a serious move so looking at their ambition and the ground reality uh where is the gap or where do you think he has an opportunity i think the prime minister modi sees some current amongst the voters which we are not able to see if you recall 2019 the top 3 rallies of the prime minister were in up west bengal and odisha because he saw that there could be a likely decline of seats from the north this time as well he sees that there could be a decline of seats from north and western regions and there is a potential to increase seats or increase vote share in tamil nadu in a post jalalita post karunanidhi era because they have been towering personalities but it's a daunting task the advantage which bjp enjoys in other parts of the country the dmk enjoys here 
because it has more than 50% vote share. Whereas the BJP-led alliance along with PMK has just around 10% vote share and the AIADMK 20% vote share, which means that without making a significant dent in the vote share of DMK, it is not really possible to win a significant amount of seats. However, it's a vote share play and the Prime Minister hopes that banking on his popularity and his charisma and the scope for an opposition or a third force, he could be able to draw significant amount of votes here and sheets. Uh, Manu, do you really uh, uh, think that the whole conversation now begins with, uh, with Mr. Modi and the reason behind it, there is a fatigue about Dravidian politics? Um. Chennai is very hospitable and uh, let, let me on behalf of my fellow spokespersons welcome you all having come from Karnataka and Maharashtra before that. But that does not mean that Chennai will accommodate just about anyone and everyone when it comes to determining our political future. These elections, that is the 2024 general elections, are as much about the future of Indian democracy as much as it is about my constituency, my state and so on. Of course, the Prime Minister, having been our Prime Minister for 10 years, does enjoy a great deal of attention, you know, when it comes to whether it is conversation amongst people like us, you know, in the, in the, amongst the common people, as we say, or in media spaces. But that in itself, according to me, my first point would be, is that, is there a Narendra Modi fatigue? My second point is that it seems that at least now that uh, the Bharatiya Janata Party has realized that they have to give importance to states. India, as we know, is a union of states. And for a while there, and for a while I mean from 2014 to 2023, it seemed like they had almost forgotten and there was too many centralized sort of tendencies within the way government functioned. So we are happy that the Prime Minister has come quite often to Tamil Nadu. We are happy that he often says that he wants to learn Tamil and he wants to understand Tamil culture. I think that in itself shows that the BJP has lacked someone who can explain what Tamil Nadu stood for. As some of the, my fellow panelists, the experts have mentioned, this has been a state that has been dominated by a type of politics, you know, you may call it Dravidian politics, you may call it autonomy, state autonomy, you may call it federalist politics, you may call it social democratic politics, whatever it is. Yes, it is a unique brand of politics. There is a strong sense of identity to the people here, the language, the culture. And this is not Manuraj saying this, this is the Prime Minister who has realized Manu, uh, this. You, you, your parties are actually selling this uh, narrative. Uh, from a space of grievance, uh, that narrative, which is basically anti-center rhetoric, has actually now become rhetoric. You have nothing else to sell. Actually, it, it is not anti-center and it is not from a position of grievance. I, I beg to uh, disagree there. We, like I said, we have a very strong sense of identity. It is from a sense of a place of pride in knowing what we are, who we are. Our movement, almost a hundred year old movement, talks not about hatred, it talks about self-respect. It says that I have to respect myself as much as I respect any other person in front of me. From, it is from that point that we oppose the caste hierarchy. It is from that point we oppose discrimination amongst people. So that is my primary point. It is the sense of identity that has defined our politics and it has become very suspicious of what Delhi or if I may say uh, in a cheeky way what Nagpur has started doing to this country. <laughs> you know that yes there is a tendency now to distrust Delhi. There is a tendency to question what are the diktats coming from Nagpur. Mm -hmm. But we are not against uh, anyone. We are saying that ensure that states that's not only Tamil Nadu. Right. Make sure every state is respected right. and treated Some, equally. Yeah. Somewhere Apsara uh, Tamil Nadu parties are uh, underappreciating what Mr. Modi is telling an individual Tamil or a Tamil family. That Tamil is an antiquity. It is an old civilization. Tamil is the oldest language, oldest, older than Sanskrit. He is telling you that your civilization 
started from democratic norms, mother of democracy is Tamil Nadu. And then he uses strong symbols like Sengol, bringing Xi Jinping to Tamil Nadu. He is directly talking to the Tamil families and you are not realizing this power. See, I would like to let you, like I would like to tell you that I think Prime Minister Modi is the Prime Minister of the country. So he should look at every state with equality and inclusivity. I think it's great that he gives the importance to Tamil Nadu the way he does, but I think it's all very seasonal. I don't think um, it's something which he really means or it's from the heart. I think it's very seasonal. I think the Sengol also is, has been propped up at the opportune time. Similarly, during when elections are announced, Mr. Modi comes more often to Tamil Nadu. And just by by hearting a few lines of the Tirukkural or using a teleprompter, you don't become a Tamil. I think Tamil is a, a larger sentiment than just reciting a few lines. I think the people of Tamil Nadu go by parties which, you know, reduce prices, petrol, diesel, um, you know, uh, subsidies on cylinders. I think daily economic upliftment is what people of Tamil Nadu vote for. And if you go by the AIDMK track record, when we were in power, the central state synergy was something which Mr. Edapadi actually paid attention to in terms of budget allocation, land allocation, and also in terms of um, sensible policy that benefited the Tamils. And I think he found that perfect balance. Post that, I think your next question would be, why not the BJP? We broke away from the BJP because they were not somebody who could sustain the development for Tamil Nadu. I think for us, while we were in power, we were able to kind of uh, maneuver the partnership better. And I think now, um, Mr. Prime Minister, coming to Tamil Nadu won't translate to a larger vote share or larger seats. Okay. Uh, Mr. Narayanan, you heard their critique. Uh, the headline is that uh, the uh, risk to democracy and the approach towards Tamil Nadu is via some symbolic gestures and Tamilians are not impressed. <laughs> Then, uh, first of all, uh, Mr. Manu and Mr. Stalin should have said that uh, they don't want Rahul Gandhi. He is also from Delhi or Italy. See, we are Indians, very simple. I am a Tamilan. Manu cannot say that Narayanan is a Delhiite or a North Indian. I am a Tamilan. I am a proud Tamilan. They don't have any patent rights, either DMK or AIDMK, they don't have patent rights. In fact, I can talk very, very fluently in a very neat and beautiful Tamil with the grammar. So, these people who have been saying that they are for Tamils, actually, Manu was saying that, you know, uh, the, 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 their movement was for so many things. It is for… It's, it's a divisive politics. They have been doing divisive politics right from the day one, right from the Justice Party. They said the British should not go back, they have to remain in uh, Tamil Nadu. So, they have been doing that and we all know that. So, as far as we are concerned, all are one, India is one. India divided its states for its administrative purposes. That is what Dr. Ambedkar had said. You can't deny that. And now you say that India is made of states. No, India made states. That is the fact. That is the constitution. We need to understand this. These people should learn this. They don't, even if they know, they will pretend as if they don't know. We are here to correct that. Because I am also a Tamilan. Manu is also a Tamilan. I have to correct it. So, we will do that. And in the last three, four years, our organizations, as uh, rightly pointed out by uh, Mr. Shastri, yes, from 67 there was a change. And from 77, these two political parties, the DMK and the AIDMK, was sharing almost 60 to 70 percent of the votes. That is right. I don't deny it. But, so many people like Communist Congress and the Alliance parties of DMK, everybody says that we will not have, uh, we will not let BJP have a foothold in uh, Tamil Nadu, as if they have a foothold in Tamil Nadu. No, they were taking, Communists were taking two seats. Communists were taking two seats for paying, getting 15 crores from DMK. That is what uh, Communists have been. The Congress is begging for seats with DMK. We don't do that. We don't do that. So, this is the issue. We, yes, we had an alliance with the AADMK. But we parted due to so many reasons. The Prime Minister made it very clearly that the breakaway of, uh, the breakup of alliance between ADMK and BJP will not have a problem for BJP, it is for the ADMK. And I am telling you, on June 4th, you will see that the ADMK will feel very sad for coming out of BJP's alliance, NDA alliance. Absara, you should respond. See, I really feel that the Prime Minister coming to Tamil Nadu is not the issue and who is a bigger Tamil is not the issue. The issue is when the state leader 
the Tamil Nadu BJP state leader, makes the most irresponsible, most uh, uh, lowest of political discourse, attacking our leaders like Madam Jayalalitha or Mr. Anna Durai. Or he even says the AIDMK will cease to exist. He is somebody who's not even won a single councillor election. Madam Jayalalitha has been a six-time chief minister. AIDMK has been in power for 30 years in the state. So when you are in an alliance with a party like the AIDMK, you have to go by alliance dharma. We can also make irresponsible statements. But when you are a part of a party with such a large cadre base and you expect it to translate on the ground, how will the cadres work together? Number one. Number two, I think prime minister coming here is not the issue in who is a bigger Tamil, as Mr. Narayan said. Everybody has a right to celebrate you know, their, their ethnicity and their, uh, the, the, the state that they live in. But I don't think the state leader understands Understands that. I don't think the state leader understands that he's, he's actually not put any runs on the political runs on the table to wish away parties and leaders. Yeah. See, first of all, uh, I, I would like to clarify yeah. Apsara mm -hmm. that, you know, it, it is definitely, you know, uh, she will say like that and I have been saying like this. The uh, lowest remarks made by uh, some of the AADMK former ministers, obviously, any person, a young, dynamic and an aggressive person like Mr. Annamalai is bound to reshoot. That he did. There is nothing wrong. And I, I am again saying that these people think that no other party except DMK and AADMK will survive in Tamil Nadu. No, it is not so. We have our… Now, the flags of BJP is there in each and nook and corner of Tamil Nadu. We have so, grown. Yeah. So, I just uh, want to just add one, one, sec, one, sec, one sec, last point. Let, let's try to just, cover some more… Just one, clarity, one point of rebuttal. Chronologically, the attack was started from the BJP. Uh, Sandeep ji, uh, a time comes where there is a turning point in uh, politics of a country or a state. Of course, BJP is hoping that that turning point is here and now in 24 Lok Sabha election, which benefit they will maybe reaping in assembly election. What do you think? Where is AIA DMK, now three factions, they are standing. Will they be the um, biggest loser in this election, followed by DMK vote? Whatever vote share, BJP ga gathers. What is BJP's strategy vis-a-vis -vis these two parties? Sanjay ji, two points on that. Uh, it was a very interesting debate we just now had. From my understanding, the alliance between the BJP and Anna DMK broke simply because the BJP saw an opportunity for a larger stake in the politics of the state and not be the junior partner, but be the senior partner of another alliance. So that's, and for a simple reason that when you become the senior partner of the alliance, you dictate the narrative which you would like to lead. And when you are the junior partner in an alliance, you follow the narrative which the senior partner provides. Turning point is something which we all are very interestingly watching. Will the 2024 elections be the start of that turning point? I don't think it will be the turning point. Will it be the start of the turning point where you have redefining of the electoral competition in the state, which was traditionally between two groups led by two Dravidian parties, are we likely to see the third entrant making a splash? And in the process, possibly, if that splash actually happens, pushing back one of the two, and given the DMK being in power, the one of the two would automatically then be the other DMK. Right. What has changed? Uh, BJP earlier used to talk in the language of Hindi, Hindutva, nationalism. This time, Mr. Modi and Mr. Shah led BJP is focusing on new Tamilian aspiration and having a civilizational context. In between, there is a very interesting caste play in this state. Would you like to uh, throw some light on that? See, uh, I think that Banta was particularly impressive. Because one of the things that was unspoken was that, yes, I understand and, you know, I dig deep into the history of the Justice Party and the self-respect movement and all of this here, how it spreads to Mysore. In fact, I have the figures of how much the Brahmins captured all the civil services and how the, you know, I, I, that's all history. But the point is that at the peak, when the polity was divided between the two uh, Dravidian parties from the 70s up until the 1990s, you required the self-respect movement, the legacy of the justice, but also a filmy tarka. Both these parties are led by stellar, iconic uh, film heroes who were speaking this language. And you built a regional identity 
and you cannot be purist and say that that identity was purely just the justice party i mean not all those movies started with an ode to uh, ev ramaswamy honorable ev ramaswamy nayakar they were film heroes of course i have i know the genre of the films etc we can that's not the time but the time is now for us to tell us that it was self respect it was justice it was non brahmin but it had a strong filmy tadka and the decline and the unfortunate demise of madam jailalita has left a vacancy that i don't see the aia dmk simply being able to pull along by drumming ideology where did the bjp see the opportunities now it sees the opportunity also in a vacancy of leadership now why am i to not understand that efforts like the tamil samagam now i wasn't here and i'm sure there's a lot of identity self respect we are the tamil nadu but i was seeing the uh, and this was last year december i was seeing the visitors in varanasi and i was seeing the people from the rss who would uh, you know lead the efforts at the grassroots level now all of them almost all of the uh, people i met from the rss uh, happened to be tamilians yeah so you yeah. cannot deny that they were not hmm. and the hordes the redoing of the kashi vishwanath i in fact up until 2 weeks ago on 31st of march i was at the bhu and then when i went to see the kashi vishwanath the streets are filled by people from tamil nadu i cannot do a caste census there and do a dipstick indicator hmm. and check whether you are this ideology or that but i feel the bjp's push towards a revival to was a revival of what connects kashi with uh, kanyakumari <laughs> tamil nadu is very very important not many will know that the chaltries here for years sustained the kashi vishnath temple when it was under duress so i think those unsaid uh, you know pillars of identity are what the bjp is now pushing forward with yeah. and that's so, the challenge you have yeah. just to, yeah, you to, want to address to... that and also the turning point question very briefly uh and and let me preface the by stating the obvious that tamil nadu is sort of a, a home of temples i mean temple tourism is is rampant in tamil nadu and be it kasi be it you know rameshwaram madurai tanjavur tiruvannamalai palani there is you know there is plenty of religiosity that is inherent to the people of the state um, but but that's not the point i think the point about the turning point that i want to make is that it goes back 50 years in in the late 60s was the turning point you had back then a congress dominated union and congress dominated every single state it was a monopoly of governance and by breaking the monopoly first the dmk then the admk which was you know off from the dmk they started a different form of governance now let us now now that we've played this over 50 years let's see the results right the export preparedness this is not manu's numbers this is the niti ayog's numbers they've said tamil nadu has the best export preparedness we have and we have 43% female participation across the country 100 out of 100 women working in manufacturing in the country 43 are from tamil nadu this is not again manu this is the ministry of industry and commerce saying that and i'm not saying it's just the dmk i'm 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 equally i'm fair to say that this is the dmk and the admk but what i'm trying to say is that this has not happened because we have had a double engine sarkar this has not happened because you know we have followed some model uh you know which is the gujarat model i mean in fact this election is as much about how much the bjp has abandoned the gujarat model <coughs> discourse this this election is about understanding that states like tamil nadu and i'm not saying we have a monopoly on development social or economic or otherwise there are many states that are doing well kerala maharashtra gujarat himachal so on but it is it is a moment to understand that states when left to themselves when given the right fiscal federal policies can shine can outshine the rest of the country they can be leaders they can be role models so my question back to everyone here and the people watching is why do we need a party or a government which is underperformed what we have done as a state the what we call what we proudly now call the dravidian model and again we are not saying that it's only my my chief minister or my party leaders the admk was as much okay. part of this hmm. movement so we have outshined the rest of the country maternal mortality sir, infant mortality core school libraries one, one second, so on and so yeah. forth uh, mr narayanan 
Yeah. The Dravidian model of development is better <laughs> than Gujarat model is the no, point. No sir. no, sir. Coastal states will have definitely, they are manufacturing. See, it's very simple, throughout the world. See, Tamil Nadu is a coastal state, Gujarat is a coastal state, Maharashtra is a coastal state. Wherever ports are there, the development is going to happen. That is what the Dutch did, that is what the British did. So, you cannot say that it is only because of DMK and AADMK, the state has grown. See, now we have to understand the entire country is growing. Uttar Pradesh is growing like anything. Now, Tamil Nadu, the chief minister proudly says we are in the third position or fourth position. No, you have gone from second to fourth. This is what is happening. Gujarat is becoming more because Mr. Modi who was there for more than 15 years. He has developed it. Yes. We have competition. Now the chief minister says this, Mr. M.K. Stalin, day for yesterday is telling that uh, a big project came to the Koyamathur and it was uh, threatened by Gujarat, the central government and they have taken it. He mentions about the Tata semiconductor factory, right? So, we need to understand by saying that they had a policy from May. How can you say that they threatened and took it? Then how Tata will remain here? They will close everything. Is it threatening? See, this, this is the problem. See, the, the development did not come only because of rule. The development came because of the resources. We used it. Yes, now the government, the Indian government uses it more because we are concentrating more on infrastructure. That is what our manifesto also says. We don't give free, free buys. Free okay, we, do, we are not for no revity culture here. We have, uh, we have uh, definitely, uh, we have given an infrastructure budget, infrastructure uh, manifesto by which development will be there for the entire country, not only Tamil Nadu, everywhere. But you have a port, yes. We will do it. That is what I am saying. Karnataka is number two now. Hmm. Maharashtra is developing like Maharashtra. Is, we have a huge difference. UP which was in the 17th uh, state below us, now UP is very close. Now we have to understand. Yes, I, I do accept uh, Manu that we are all one. Tamil, Tamil Nadu should be number one. Yes, but some effort should be put. Na? You cannot uh, daily blame the Prime Minister a for… New, yeah, agreed. A new accelerated model is in play and that we have to acknowledge. Uh, coming back to the caste factor, Amitabh, we were talking a while ago about that uh, there are 15, 20 players, important players in this state. And somewhere, despite talking about uh, women empowerment and social justice, large number of uh, smaller OBC communities, they feel left out. That is the assumption BJP is working with. Would you like to throw some light on that? Yeah, essentially, uh, uh, the DMK alliance has more than uh, uh, five parties, so eight to ten parties there. The AI DMK has four or five. The BJP has four or five again. So there are 15, 20 parties. And a lot of these parties are contesting on just one to two seats, and they re represent one single caste, like the PMK or the MDMK or the DMDK. So this is also a contrast. While it is one of the best developed states, caste is deep rooted here. And the OBC reservation, this is the, one of the only states where the OBC reservation or the entire reservation cap is above 50 percent. The OBC population is 68 percentage. BJP has cracked the OBC code in the rest of the country, largely in the north, west and the east. But it has not been able to do so here. However, uh, with Andamalai belonging to the community and with some alliances with PMK and the Thevers and the Nadas and the Gounders, they have got around 20% plus support in 2014 elections. So while Sir is talking about a double engine ke sarkar, actually there has been double engine ke sarkar. DMK has, or AIA DMK, have most of the time allied with either the BJP or the Congress. DMK, in fact, since the inception of AIA DMK, Whenever it has not aligned with any national party, it has not even give, got five seats in a Lok Sabha election. So these things are also there. They have also allied with both the BJP and the Congress, hopping from one alliance to another and taken also benefit of the centre projects whenever there is a, a same government yeah. at, the, at the centre. This is an interesting point that uh, there has been practically double engine Sarkar because whichever party is ruling Chennai at that point in time has always been friendly with the central government. Sandeep ji wants to Can I just it. add to what uh, was said by Amitabh ji? I think the caste calculus, whatever we say, is important in defining and deciding the shape of Tamil Nadu politics. 
you look at all the three alliances, if you look at the DMK alliance, uh, of the seven parties in the alliance, four of them definitely have a strong caste base limited to a particular area. The same is true of the Anna DMK alliance when you look at the three parties other than the Anna DMK who are there. And also in the case of the BJP, if you look at that alliance of seven plus parties, save the BJP, the other parties have strong caste identities. So save the leaders of the three alliances, the others in the alliance are all contributing to, in various parts of the state, bringing to the alliance certain caste groups and their support. So, for me, irrespective of which alliance we talk about, though they may openly not say that, I think caste politics or caste calculations are at the base of the electoral strategy of all the three alliances. Right. Let me just add one, one point, uh, almost to clarify what I said earlier. When I meant double engine circa, what I was referring to is having the same party in Delhi and in your state capital. That has not happened in Tamil Nadu since 1967. And yes, I think the DMK and AIA DMK have both been uh, part of different alliances, often with, you know, with, with the two major national parties. But we have not developed the state by bending over backwards or no towing to what the Delhi parties say. It, it is about, like I said, understanding what federalism truly means. In the fiscal sense, ensuring that what the states must get by virtue of either GST compensation or through the planning commission or now through the finance commission, that is gotten. Ensuring that there is a proper distribution or devolution of powers, ensuring that there is not an encroachment of the state's rights by the union. Well, so on and so forth. Sir, absolutely. I just want to make, what, what I just want to make a point here. Your previous panelists in the previous round were talking about how BJP's n almost natural growth is attributed to AIDMK not having Madam Jayalalitha and AIDMK not being on a strong footing. We have to understand that after Madam's demise, despite 10 years of anti-incumbency, despite an unfavorable alliance with the BJP, despite having people like OPS and Sashikala and TTV playing spoil sport, we were still able to muster up nearly 70 MLAs in 2021. So we can't uh, write off Mr. Yadapati's leadership so easily and, and think that the BJP will naturally eat into the IDMK vote share. Right. Mr. Naran, you wanted to react to this yeah, point. Yeah, yeah, see, um, uh, often this, we have seen… This parcel of resources in no, terms no, see, of… see, often we have seen as if uh, the BJP government, the central government is not, uh, uh, you know, um, uh, redirecting the finances given by, you know, Tamil Nadu. That is what they have been saying. Even Udayanidhi Stalin, I thought he is a Loyola student, but uh, unfortunately, uh, he doesn't know commerce, he doesn't know anything, economics. Because he says, when, when we pay one, one rupee, the government, the central government is giving back 29 paisa. That is what he has been saying. Now, in the entire Tamil Nadu, Kanchipuram is number one uh, uh, district which creates revenue. Why they are giving only 11 paisa to that district? Why should they give that? I don't, I don't understand. See, this is planning and as if uh, the DMK, which was a part in Congress government for 10 years, as if they have been giving Tamil Nadu uh, 1 rupee 50 paisa for getting every 1 rupee. They have, if, if, if those measures are taken, if it is 29 paisa, then uh, they were giving only 20 paisa. No. See, the, the, the planning commission, now it is, you know, um, uh, the finance commission has got its own uh, system. We talk with all the states, the entire states are being discussed and after that only, we come to a thing. When we, we, we manufacture a Hyundai car at uh, Sri Parambudur, a person sitting in UP buys it, he pays tax. But whereas in UP, the same 10 lakhs of agriculture uh, um, uh, commodity is coming to Tamil Nadu, we don't pay tax. See, what is this? The basic, a very basic uh, principle and uh, the, the economics, they don't understand. Right. See, now, you see, that is why I'm saying this is, they are trying to divide this nation in the name of caste, in the name of language, in the name of state's interest. That is what they are doing and it is the BJP's duty to say they are wrong. Yeah, this is how they are shaping their narrative. We want reactions from both. Manisha ji and Sandeep ji want to react on this. But before we get into a break, I want to ask one question to Manu. Uh, look, what you are saying uh, may be completely valid. But the problem you are facing, being an old party, is 
are two uh, issues that BJP is raising about DMK. One is corruption, another is dynasty. This dynasty thing and corruption together, the way Mr. Modi shapes the narrative, is definitely working against you. I've not seen any evidence to that, but actually, you know, you started by saying, sir, that we are an old party. Actually, these two allegations are even older than our party, <laughs> meaning they predate the existence of all political systems in India. Nevertheless, see, we are duty-bound to answer these questions, though they may be often repeated. Now, uh, Mr. Modi says that we are dynastic party, we've come, you know, we have people from the family, but that is not to say that his party is devoid of dynasts or people who have had fathers or uncles or, uh, you know, mothers in the party, right? So, you know, when, when, when he does that, it, it, I think, unfortunately, shines a stronger light on his own conduct. Corruption, I do not know what he's referring to. I mean, is there, a, is there something that we have been convicted for? Is there something that we have been, you know, the party as such over 10 years in government? Has he found something against us that he's not telling us? These are all allegations that crop up every election season. But that will not actually make a tiny bit difference amongst the voters. They are very clear. What is the future of India that they want for themselves and their children? What is the future of India? Is it an India where there is greater religious polarization? Is it an India where your linguistic, your state identity will be suppressed? Or is it an I India where there will be greater equality and greater freedom of thought? Half a minute point. Yeah. Uh, I think uh, while accepting Manu's point, I'm going back to your bending over backwards point and I'm making it as a positive comment. Both the Dravidian parties have benefited greatly by being part of coalition politics. Uh, be it the first alliance that they had when Charan Singh became uh, Prime Minister or later. Uh, and also in a certain way, the shaping of national politics the defeat of uh, Vajpayee by one vote was triggered off by the Anna DMK withdrawal. And a lot of the controversies around UPA were also linked to the type of portfolios and what happened in those portfolios. So, in a sense, uh, I would say I don't think the Dravidian party is bent backwards. I think the national party is bent backwards to accommodate the uh, the Dravidian parties because they were critical for them for the alliance that they were leading. Interesting take. We will continue this uh, fascinating conversation, but time for break. We will be right back. During the break, we had some private conversation and I must thank uh, publicly, Mr. Narayanan, because I said three of you party spokespersons are having a very gentle, nice debate. So, Mr. Narayanan said, we are on NDTV. Thank you so much, sir. <laughs> yeah, so Dravidian party bending backward or national party is back bending backward. Manisha, you, you want to make a point? So, I want to make a point that it's been the Dravidian parties <laughs> that have been able to literally, uh, I would say, arm twist the center into doing uh, what they have wanted the center to do. Uh, that may have been the advantage of their resources or uh, strength or ideology. Uh, remember the ideology they had until the BJP really decoded it was that this type of welfare plus non-Brahmin or anti-Brahmin welfare politics will expand the agenda of social justice. The North was slow in taking to it. So not only were they ruling here, they were also ruling ideologically how social justice parties would craft themselves up. Now, however, I also see the politics played here as very pragmatic. Uh, yes, uh, you know, I, I remember the times when the DMK had a very uh, trenchant anti-Congress uh, stand, so to say. And I remember the conversations in Mailapur especially that were uh, definitely at arm's length from the DMK. There's been a world face and a complete U-turn on that now. And I see the DMK steering a Congress-led uh, coalition or a coalition with the Congress has a lot of space. Uh, the AIA DMK, on the other hand, while the DMK is leading its fervent pitch, as Mr. Manu is saying, uh, very federal, within courts, a little anti-center, against the injustice of the center, but the AIA DMK keeps quiet. The really different discourse is coming from the BJP, very clearly a national mode of politics, 
a mode of politics that challenges the domination of language-based cultural identity and also says that a lot of the kudos that the DMK is taking today for the development, uh, developmental model as being a state-specific model, mm. as being that of national advantages of trade and location. So I see the BJP having a different pitch, but the DMK and the AIA DMK sharing up the same space. So I see this as pragmatic, but I would leave it open for them yeah, to so tell this us is very interesting. what I mean, kind of implicit yeah, Amitabh, are there. Uh, because both parties are talking in the same language vis-a-vis -vis against a national party or national parties. So do you think there is an opportunity actually which they may be losing out to actually jointly oppose BJP, otherwise BJP will make some serious inroads here? Yeah, of course, as, as part of any electoral strategy, you, as part of any electoral strategy, you, you do try to prop up some parties to, to, to keep opposition at bay. See, this sort of a fight already happened in Tamil Nadu in 2014 where BJP led a coalition of smaller parties and it got 19% vote share. It got two seats with ADMK winning 37 and DMK not being able to score a single seat at that point of time. So there is a big swing vote in Tamil Nadu. In 2014, 20% plus switched from, AIAD, from DMK to ADMK and in 2019 from AIADMK to DMK. This is the vote which BJP is eyeing at because this is not a hardcore ideological vote of both these parties and it believes that the first time voters with the buzz it has created with Anna Malai at the, as the state president and these key alliances, some personalities will be able to at least get it some traction, some seats in this election. So, this personality cult is an interesting point to discuss after MGR, Jailalita, Karunanidhi. Uh, maybe Tamilians are craving for a larger than life persona as their big leader. So, at the top you have Mr. Modi and Anna Malai is a kind of being crafted into such a persona apsara. Would you agree? See, I think people, the electorate also, has also changed from the Karunanidhi and the Jailalita Madam era. I think people are more aware, if you look at the way they're responding to candidates, the, the way they're responding to manifestos, they have changed from just being followers of, uh, you know, godlike, demi-godlike uh, leaders. I think people now want runs on the table, some, you know, benefits through schemes and policies. And I feel when it comes to Tamil Nadu, it's only two symbols that people recognize. That's the rising sun and the two leaves. I think every other player, uh, no matter what, if you have Anna Malay, who's currently a social media sensation for all the... Uh, unpopular things or the popular things he says, I don't think it's a factor. I think people vote uh, for, for example, in this election, I, th I don't think anybody will vote for DMK because they haven't been able to keep up their promises of gold loan waiver, of you know bringing down the prices of essential goods, of uh, bringing down the price of petrol diesel or giving a you know subsidy for cylinders. They've not been able to deliver on the promise of thousand rupees they were supposed to give them. I mean, these are the issues people vote for. I don't think somebody like an Anna Malay who's a hashtag will actually kind of create any impact. She is saying Anna <laughs> Malai is only a hashtag. Uh, she will know, you know, on June 4th, what is the impact. Because Anna Malai has been uh, regarded as an excellent person with a clean record, clean image. He is very popular, he is very simple, aggressive, dynamic and a youngster. He is just 36, 37 years old, so people definitely love him because wherever we go, people say that. Even uh, people from DMK and AADMK love Anamali. That is, that is the actual thing. That is what, that is what, that's what I said, a silent revolution is going to happen in Tamil Nadu and Anamali will be the cause for BJP making that silent revolution. There is no doubt at all. I have no doubt at all. Uh, a huge number of uh, percentage of votes from DMK and the AADMK will definitely come to BJP that we are going to see, we are seeing on the field. I am, I have almost gone to more than 15, 16 constituencies so far and I have seen the change coming. I, I am seeing the change coming and we need to understand this because the DMK without Congress and its allies, the DMK can never cross 15, 16 percent in Tamil Nadu. And that is shown right from 19, just to uh, 30 seconds I will take. 67 it was because of Mr. Rajaji, DMK came. 71 it is because of Madam Indira Gandhi. 
they, they have come to the uh, you know rule and uh, from 1977 to 87 mr mgr was there they could not even go near the secretariat that was the thing and then uh, in 89 uh, there was no uh, admk as she, she rightly said the two leaf symbol and in 91 jayalalitha had she was she, she was conquering literally and in 96 it was because of mr rajini and cho and muponar again dmk came and in 2006 Jailalta called this alliance as a minority alliance. Right. And in 2021, if not for uh, their alliance, DMK is not a party which, as they claim, is a very big party. As far as I am concerned, DMK is not a big party as we all think. Okay. So, yeah. before we conclude, I wanted to ask Sandeep Ji and Manisha and uh, Amitabh, which is the most likely vote going to shift? What is the BJP's hope? Is it first time voters, is large chunk of only women voters or is it some AIA, DMK uh, male voters also or DMK male voters also? What will be the likely scenario of vote shift if there is? The BJP is definitely hoping for, I'm saying hoping for whether it will happen, I don't know. It's hoping for a shift from both the Anna DMK and the DMK. And two points on that. One, unlike the Dravidian parties who have a local face, the BJP is focusing on a national face with a local face, but the national face is the more prominent face. Will that work in Tamil Nadu politics? I don't know, which has always had a local face at the front. BJP has a local face, but then there is a national face, which is a much bigger face that is there. I think, as was said, the youth vote will be critical because that is now an increasing percentage. And that's a youth which was, which has not seen the politics of the 70s and 80s, which has seen the politics of the 90s and subsequent. So that, I think, could make a difference in terms of the alliances and aspirations that are emerging. Manisha ji, some say that maybe it is great uh, communication method using symbols like uh, Ayodhya or Murugan or Sengol. But when it comes to hard political decision, it is very difficult to swing Tamil voters to a national party like BJP. Yes, and I think there I agree with Manu. The great history of welfare politics, remember, and that politics the DMK alone cannot uh, claim uh, legacy to. The noon meal schemes were, uh, you know, the beginning of that. Uh, but a great legacy of the welfare-oriented policies, rooting them in class caste-based, lower bottom of the pyramid policies, that's created a vote block for an ideology. And that ideology stays intact. And therefore, I believe that the votes that the BJP may likely get would be, number one, not from the caste class pyramid or the bottom most. Urban areas may uh, see some uh, movement towards that. Also, as Pro uh, Professor Sandeep Shastri said, the young voter, remember what has the young voter seen? The young voter has seen not the ideology of the past, but the iconization of the film uh, heroes, etc. In 93, I was here for a World Bank loan uh, taken by Tamil Nadu, uh, as also other Indian yeah. states for primary yeah. education. <laughs> and Jalalita Ji's statue was placed in the secretariat so, and her birthday was hmm. celebrated. There may be an exhaustion with that kind of iconization. Un undoubtedly, Amitabh. Uh, that both uh, parties in Tamil Nadu have pioneered many such welfare schemes. But to compete with that, Mr. Modi has also uh, uh, made it a fine art of direct benefit transfer. And many central schemes are running across the country. Do you think the whole Labharthi focus uh, will add some benefit to BJP vote kitty or no? Yeah, it could add some, some votes because uh, uh, not only young voters, which are almost 20% of population, 18 to 29 age group, women, Tamil Nadu is one of the largest beneficiaries of the mudra loan. Then you have almost 30 lakh farmers who have got Kisan Nidhi scheme benefit. You have 40, 41 lakh women who have got uh, PM Ujwala benefit. So there is a battle of state beneficiaries versus central beneficiaries also, which is going on. And now the voters have to decide whether to give the credit of the state welfare schemes in a national election 
to DMK or an AIA DMK, and there is wherein the lies the battle. And that is the challenge. So the entire election, because of Mr. Modi's serious focus on South Indian states, especially Tamil Nadu. Remember, seven trips or eight trips he has already made, and many more to uh, come in other southern states. So you are seeing a battle where BJP is playing a high risk and high reward game, and DMK and AI DMK have to make sure that they do something when 19th April the entire state is going for poll they have couple of days to do whatever is possible and we will be watching for the outcomes very very closely thank you so much for this fascinating conversation